as a coach, what's the most efficient way to run a practice? What's going on guys? Coach Matt and YouGoProBaseball.com. I'm here with the man, Nick Shaw, former professional middle infielder and creator of the Baseball Box. It's a monthly subscription box with all types of baseball goodies sent directly to your doorstep. I'll leave a link down below where you can check it out for more information. Now, in this video, Nick and I want to talk about some practice plan tips, uh, just kind of as a coach, what's the most efficient way to run a practice? Because you see a lot of things out there, right? Yeah, so I'm around a lot of ball players now, a lot of a lot of practices, and I experienced these, these practices as a kid. All right, and I'm not saying that I know everything about a practice plan. It's just a couple tips that I want to share that you, that might get the most out of your players. All right, when it comes game time. All right, now <clears throat> a couple of instances that I want to talk about is, uh, say you have 20 guys on a roster, 25 guys on a roster, and you have one coach, two coaches. We can't have all 25 guys or 20 guys participating in the same drill unless it's a team drill, the whole practice. Okay, that leads to a lot of standing around. I remember I used to play shortstop. All right, in practices, team practices, the pitchers would be doing PFPs, and I would kind of just be standing out there like this. All right, and I would kind of waste away an hour or so of a practice. Instead, what I challenge you guys to do, and it doesn't require many coaches, is divide your players up based on their position. What I mean by that is infielders go with one coach or infielders are one group, outfielders go with another coach or they're their own group that doesn't require a coach and pitchers go and do their thing. This requires you to have a practice plan for each group though. Okay, so it's gonna challenge you as a coach to prepare a little bit more uh, to have practice plans for each uh, positional group. Okay, now what this will actually do too is it'll limit the practice time too. You won't have to run that three hour practice to try to get reps for everybody. If you divide them up in this way, maybe an hour and a half practice, two hour practice, everyone can get some reps, okay? And here's how I design it as a coach myself, is infielders will go, they'll do their defensive stuff with a coach on the field, okay? They'll do their double play stuff, their infield routine, whatever it might be that day, their fly balls. Outfielders will go in the cage. Now, if you have a T or an L screen in there, which I'm sure you do, you can have pl other players, if you're allowed to, other players flip them front toss, or the kids can just hit off of a T. It doesn't require a coach. If you have an extra coach to throw BP, that's even better. Send them to the cage, outfielders will get their reps while the infielders are doing their defensive stuff. When it's time to switch after 20, 25 minutes, outfielders come to the field, they'll get their routine, fly balls, running through the ball, whatever it might be, while the infielders hit in the cage, okay? Meanwhile, the pitchers can be doing whatever you'd like them to do. They can do PFPs on the infield while the outfielders are in the outfield doing their fly balls. They can be running, they can do their arm care, whatever it might be. Okay, but all the while you have three groups doing what they need to do, getting reps. And it leads to a lot of reps. I still have kids that I work with hitting, fielding, <clears throat> that will come to me on an individual basis. And I'll say, how many reps are you getting at practice? Oh, I hit BP and I got 15 swings. And that was it. How many ground balls did you get? Uh, I got about 20 ground balls in an entire practice. Okay, to me, that's not very productive. I'm just kind of shaking off the rust getting used to things, getting the blood going after 15, 20 reps, never mind being done for the day after that, okay? So divide up your groups um, and find ways to get them reps during the whole practice. Now, after all that, or before whatever you prefer as a coach, we can bring them all together and do a team defensive session, whether that's double cuts where the pitchers are backing up, infielders are working double cuts, outfielders are working communication to the ball, first and third defense, uh, whatever it might be, bunt plays, that's fine. Um, and there's a time for team defensive stuff, absolutely. But divide up your groups, okay? The last instance I'll give you is batting practice. If you have 16 guys, even 12 guys, and you have your four groups or three groups, I challenge you to find a job for each group, okay? Or a task or a place to be to get reps. If you have four groups, my advice, one group's hitting BP, one group's taking reps off the bases, base running, real reps, okay? And you need to explain what that means Another group is in the cage getting swings, and the last group is shagging, okay? And it's not a shag where I just go to the outfield and I'm taking meaningless reps or I'm standing around talking to my buddy. It's reps at your position, okay? If it's my shag time, I'm at shortstop. I'm taking reads off the bat or off a fungal guy, okay? That's four groups where I'm moving. I'm constantly getting reps, and I'm not standing around. So that's my challenge to you guys, all right? A couple tips you can use to increase reps and make your team better.
That's great stuff. Great stuff. And this is this happens at every age level. I see it at too. Like I remember my dad left an article on my bed, a ma magazine back when there wasn't you know the internet like it is now. You now you can tag things. Send this video by the way to whoever needs to see it. But back then he would leave magazine articles, and I remember it was one article about this pitcher. I forget who it was, but they asked him, "What do you do to get ready for spring training?" And he said, "Well." I throw on my spikes and I go stand in the backyard for eight hours <laughs> because he's like, that's all you do as a pitcher in pro ball. You just hang out and you shag balls until you do a couple PFPs and throw your bullpen. That's really it. So as a coach, it would really help your players to be more efficient. Also, with that being said, at the younger ages, maybe rec ball, we've got volunteer coaches and teams that aren't don't have 20, 25 guys. Maybe we have 12 guys, whatever it is you know, smaller groups could help, but also letting other people help, right? Everyone's volunteering. I know I coached my son's t-ball uh, team this year, and I could not have done it without a lot of help. So recruiting other coaches to help you execute your practice plan, okay? And whether it's a dad, even if, you know, it's a dad or something, just, just explain what you want them to do, what you're trying to focus on, you have to kind of uh, delegate some of that work off to other people because you cannot be as the head coach, you can't be everywhere at the same time. Yes. Even if you have the best baseball mind, what kills me is a team of 12, and you have 12 guys in a line at shortstop taking one ground ball at a time with one coach. Divide them up um, and yeah. get more reps out. And way. you know how that works out. They're joking around <laughs> and messing around. To, yes. You know, they're, they're kids being kids, and, and that's to be expected. So we got to keep them, keep them going, keep them moving, keep them engaged in what we're doing and we got to make it fun so it's a tough job don't get me wrong it is a tough tough job and uh i just want to say first of all thank you to all the coaches out here who a lot of you guys are watching this to learn something so just thank you for volunteering your time and trying to make the game better we really appreciate you if we can do anything to help let us know um, let drop us down know. a comment below if you got any questions and we'd be happy to answer them go check out thebaseballbox.com if you got a special player that you're trying to hook up for crew we might have time before christmas right now they can oh, still yeah, get it there's plenty okay. of time okay so uh, i'll leave that link down below where you can check that out and uh thank you so much guys i hope that helped